never heard the end of it. So, I didn't do it. I finally did it, but not. Oh, well, what do you mean you say you finally did it? I did it later the next day. And uh, what do you think about what you did the next day in terms of your fears? Well, I avoided dealing with her. I left a message instead. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now look here. You see? So I don't know what the end result is. Okay. Picture now that we have a plastic sheet over this and all we're looking at are the states of mind. Would you agree the result of this dream, relating it to her everyday world, that you took a certain course of action, very different from your past, I presume? Yeah. Right? And now you're worried about what in fact you did, mm -hmm. since it was successful, and you're worried about what may happen because what could he or she do to me? Scary. Right? What's the dream telling you that you did? How serious is it? Wasn't as bad as. Not as bad? Well, it, was, it wasn't. It didn't damage anything. Oh. It didn't do any damage. Now look here. If that's true, what are the implications if that's true in the real world? By that I mean, what if the dream dropped this message to you and now that we examine it, it's saying something about these events you went through, very significant to you, I presume. Yeah. And is it telling you something about your worries and fears? They're out of balance. They're out of balance. Is that interesting? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I think so. Yes. In what way? Now you have to talk. Well, they don't fit the reality. And is the dream helping you see that? Oh, I see. Well, what do you see? Well, that it doesn't fit the reality. I'm expecting the worst, and, uh -huh. and I'm not looking at actually what is going on. Oh. It's not harming, harming mm -hmm. as much as I anticipate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Now, I want to just one moment here, go back to this. Here we are. <clears throat> in the dream, there are these elements. And as you pointed out, in this particular episode, there is the man, and there are these cars. Good. Can you describe that person in any way that you can? Recall anything about him in any way? Voice, tone, manner, style, hair, clothes, anything at all? Um, oddly enough, no, but what I thought of was he looked or seemed to be like my dad. Would be like how I would imagine my dad acting hmm. or being. If so, then. Okay. If someone is not sure, you hold it. You don't push it. Next, talk about the cars, both, either. Uh, well, my car was strong. I mean, that, I think that caused me to survive whatever I was going through. Yeah, okay. I felt like that. And that was, was your car protected. in the dream? I felt protected <clears throat> and strong. Okay. In, I mean, it was a strong car. Yeah, okay. Your vehicle is strong. Is that right? And his was. His was. A vehicle is strong. So that's Vehicle. Of all the cars that his could have been used was, in the dream. Yeah, he, mine didn't get damaged, but his was because mine grazed his, and you'd expect mine to be grazed too, but. And yours had no bad. damage whatsoever. Is that, does that add the feature? Yes. yes. Doesn't it? It adds more to the dream? Mm -hmm. Yes. Notice now, do you see how easy it is for us to talk about the dream? Because every point that she's making, you can see a correspondence mm -hmm. to her real world. Mm -hmm. And we don't even have to argue about it, do we? You see how you do it? You just, oh yeah, yeah, that fits, yeah, that fits, yeah. that fits. Mm -hmm. Analogical structure of dreams. 
the more you play with analogies, the more then you can prepare your mind to make these connections, and you don't have to do it by any trickery or interpretation or anything else. Because once you identify the set of terms, symbols, images in a dream, you look for what may correspond to it, and then it fits, doesn't it? One to one, and you read the story as a analogical story on two levels. Now, when you get to this point, the best thing to have fun with now is to go for something that is, appears to be trivial, some minor thing in the whole dream. And we didn't even talk about it. What would you say? Any images? He walked away. We didn't deal with that. Mm -hmm. We'd like to know how that is. He walked away. Right. Uh, driving in the car, you knew you were where you were going. Is any particular scene there in the car that's significant to you? Uh, yeah, it was close up. It was like a close up, like I was in the driver's seat and I was like right here. I wasn't watching myself driving. It was like I was in the seat, mm -hmm. and I was close up to the wheel, and like I was driving fast, and I and it was like I had the per, the vision I had was I moving, but I'm. Uh, Like close, holding like the wheel, like the steering wheel was right in front of me, and uh, I seem to have like just like if I had turned away for a second to look to my left, and then right in front of me was a snowbank. Okay, what does that mean? For a moment, what? It was like for a moment I looked away to the left and then right in front of me was a snowbank. So you knew where you were going and then you lost that for a second and for this second. occurred. Is that what you're saying? Is that the image in the dream? We have to make sure it fits the dream. Yeah, because I remember just like like there was some green or something over on my left side. And I looked in. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. I'll show you what we'll do with that. Let us assume for the moment that the only thing we have in the dream is just one scene, no action. Here we are. She's in the car, she's describing what it's like for her to be driving. All she knows is that for a one second, as it were, she shifts. Now, you don't want to use your words, you want to use the dreamer's words always. So, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Would you repeat what you said? What was it like in that car? You were aware of I where you were going. Yeah, holding, and then what happened? I was holding on and I looked to the left. No. Yeah. And I saw like uh, some green. And then turned forward and it was 